Uh, this is Apostle Charlie Reddish. Welcome to the reading of the word of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and keep on hearing the word of God. Faith can't come the other way. For we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So get, let's get ready to feast at the table of the Lord. The table is spread and is awaiting your arrival. Your seat is there waiting for you. Your spiritual utensils are there waiting for you to come and eat of the word of the Lord. Today, I will be reading from the book of John, chapters 15 through 18. The book of John, chapter 15 through 18. So get whatever means you use to uh, read along with me. You're welcome to share. You're welcome to uh, invite others to join in and hear what thus saith the Lord. This is the, every scripture is the prophetic word of God. All right, let's, I'm going to start reading today at the book of John chapter 15 and verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I abide in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you should ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. If the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye should ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I speak unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not known, come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the confidence come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. 
John chapter 16, commencing at verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever sh kills you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I say not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeat, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore say I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Then say some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he saith unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They say, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I say it? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, that ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh away from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say un not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speaketh no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needeth not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. And Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall receive and have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The book of John, chapter 17, commence reading at verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son 
that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of this world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me, Prayed for them, pray not for the world, but for them which thou gavest me. For they are my dines, and all mines are dines, and dines are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one as thou, Father, or in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given for me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. The book of John, chapter 18, commencing at verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted thither, with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which portrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If, ye have, if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the same might be filled which he spake of them which thou gavest me. Have I lost none? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. And smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. 
The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus and said, Then another disciple, that disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought it in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, or, or not thou also one of this man's disciples? Peter said, he said, I'm not. And the servants and officers stood there who made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Then answered Jesus to him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. When he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Or not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. Now one of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? And Peter then denied him, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto him, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto them, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Or thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? And Pilate answered him, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again and said, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Thus I read the book of John, chapters 15 through 18. I pray that you've gotten something from the word of the Lord that you heard today. I pray that the spirit of the Holy Ghost invaded your life today and refreshed you by the word of God. I pray that this word was like a fresh wind 
of the Holy Ghost breathing on you like a fresh wind of, of rain falling upon you. I pray that your spirits are filled with the word of God. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in today. And before we close, there may be somebody, someone, somewhere under the hearing of my voice now, and you want your life to change. You've been going around in that circle for years and years. Every year, it's the same thing. You're getting the same results year after year. That can come to a stop. It can come to a complete halt. All you have to do is receive Christ into your life and start meditating in his word day and night and deserve to do according to all that is written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous and have good success. So it's a simple prayer that we'll just pray. It's nothing hard. It's nothing difficult. So if you want Christ to come into your life, to know that you're right with God, and the only way you can be right with God is through Christ Jesus. All right. So if you want to receive him now, just repeat this prayer of repentance after me, and Christ will come into your heart, and your life will commence changing. Repeat this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge and I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you gave your life on the cross. You died that I can live the abundant life. I believe that you are now sitting on the right hand of God the Father. I believe that you are the Christ, the soon coming King. And I open the door to my heart and I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Savior, as my soon coming King. I believe that I am saved at this very moment. Help me, Lord, to live for you from this day forward. I cannot do it on my own. I need all the help from you that you can give me and will give me. And I believe right now that I am saved at this very moment. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Amen. Once again, uh, thank you all for joining in this morning. I appreciate you so very much. And remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And may God richly bless you. It's my prayers. And always, don't you never, ever forget this. Don't call it the way you see it. Call it the way you want it to be. God bless you. Be blessed and be safe.